Good morning. Big thank you, everyone. I'm sure my fellow commissioners will do the same. But we just wish to thank you all for hanging in there, continuing to be just such great, great team members. Thanks. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, good morning, and I am here. Commissioner O'Brien. Good morning. I'm here. Commissioner Zinnica. Good morning, everybody here. And Commissioner Stebbins. Good morning, everybody. Okay, thank you. And a reminder, this meeting is being recorded, and it is being held through um, a virtual uh, technology because Governor Baker and Clearing a state of emergency did provide relief from the open meeting law provisions that permit us to conduct this meeting remotely. We've appreciated that throughout this time. We'll get started on a on a, a second uh, meeting of the week. We have one tomorrow. It's not lost on us that so this is two weeks trending where we've had three meetings. That takes a lot of effort on everyone's part. Um, of course, the commissioners, your dedication. Is, is clearly seen, but all the work that's going on behind the scenes may not always be known, but it was certainly appreciated by all of us. So thank you. We'll get started. The um, calling to order, public meeting number 79 of our agenda setting meetings. Today is Wednesday, June 24th, 10.02 um, a.m. And we have minutes, we, um, today we do not have minutes ready. And I'm not sure if that will be later on, maybe at the, not tomorrow, but even next week, given all of our meetings, correct? Uh, Ma Madam Chair, we do have the June 10th meetings. They were distributed in the packet. Oh, oh, you know what? I have to say I did not print them out. So that's, that's my, okay. can I just take a quick, um, Let's um. Let's. Um, I'm going to have to just take a quick look. Could we maybe move this to the agenda uh, right after the agenda planning uh, notes? Sure. If I could review them, and I'll just pull them up. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that, Shara. My apologies. Okay. Um, Karen. Let me start with you on the notes. Okay, so uh, administrative update, I think we should always, you know, keep that on the agenda. I think uh, giving the commission an update on the uh, plans for the reopening, which at the earliest, uh, according to Governor's Baker's guidelines, would be on July 6th, uh, would be helpful. And just uh, a general update on, on what staff is doing would be helpful. If there's anything else the commissioners would like me to brief them on at the public meeting tomorrow, uh, please if you speak up, let me know, and uh, I'll take care of that as well. I'm wondering, Karen, um, about racing. Maybe Alex is going to get to that, but the guidelines. Do, is Alex on? So for tomorrow, I'm just thinking July 2nd. That might maybe we'll wait to just see if that gets brought up, Commissioner Cameron. Um, maybe down the, in the meeting, but we have tomorrow's meeting and then a July 2nd meeting. So let's just keep a note of that. I'm just not sure if it falls under you, Karen, or if it falls under you know, Alex separately. Todd? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we do have one issue. Uh, to bring to your attention. Uh, it has arisen at multiple properties um, and we have a recommendation that an emergency reg change be considered to address it. That relates to the allowance of employees from licensees sister properties uh, coming in to aid in the reopenings without having to undergo the uh, familiar employee licensing and registration process. Uh, you may recall that there's an existing provision of the regulations, that's at section um, 134.03, it's paragraph two, that allowed for this arrangement during the pre-opening phase of all of the casinos, but it limited those individuals stay for up to 30 days past the issuance 
of the operation certificates. So it does not really apply to the present situation. But with a few amendments to those provisions, the same arrangement could be permitted for the reopenings we're now, uh, we now have before us. Um, so that is the proposal. Uh, this is uh, an op there is an option though uh, to address this in a slightly different way. You'll also recall that the commission is authorized uh, to exempt certain gaming and gaming service employees by job description from the registration requirement. So that is something you could consider, though it, it's important to note that many of the individuals who we understand would be coming in would not actually be in the uh, gaming service employee category. So that's why it doesn't feel like that is necessarily the best approach, but it is an option. Um, but that's why we're, we're recommending uh, the emergency reg change where we do have that infrastructure for pre-opening uh, and allowing employees of sister properties uh, to come in. And the reg, just by way of quick background, without getting into um, all of the details, you'll recall requires that those individuals be identified in advance, that they wear special identifications, they be in good standing in their home jurisdictions, and that they're accompanied by a mass license or registered uh, employee if they're gonna go into any restricted areas. So there's a whole procedure in place to address um, these individuals who, again, we do understand, and uh, if I see Bill uh, down there, Bill can explain who these, uh, the types of individuals who uh, are likely to be included um, in, in this category, if that would be uh, helpful. But we, we think with a few tweaks to the existing regs, we could, um, we could make that happen quickly if that's the commission's preference. And I, I can comment that the procedure we used for the opening of the casinos and the reg that as it was designed uh, was very successful and very helpful uh, for the original openings of the casinos. So my recommendation would certainly be to mirror that for these reopenings that we just didn't uh, have uh, any idea would be coming. So uh, my suggestion is, is to uh, put something uh, quickly on the agenda to do the emergency reg. I think it made a lot of sense in the original openings and certainly translates to the situation we have now. Do we have any special considerations given COVID-19? I think the, the, the issue there, we'd have to, if people are coming from out of state, we'd have to look at uh, out of state guidelines and how that would work and make sure that that complies. So the more notice we uh, give the licensees on those requirements, the better. There's the, uh, specifically, uh, Madam Chair, the 14 day uh, self quarantine language um, that has come up that we would certainly need to uh, remind the licensees of uh, that they need to be mindful of and factor that into um, any such plans. But that's, you know, that, so that's, that's the regulatory side of the proposal. I mean, there are certainly those practical considerations as well as to whether it, it could actually work. When would you suggest that gets marked up, Karen? Uh, I think that this is something that could be done very quickly. So if uh, the commission is open to it, we could do something, you know, do a, a special meeting, maybe uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, if, you didn't, if we don't have a commission meeting on Thursday, depending on the schedule. We, have a, we do have a commission meeting on Thursday, July 7th. It's for the budget and other matters. Yes, we okay. do have that. So why don't we just do it on that date then? Is that, is that sufficiently early enough? Well, I mean, it, it, we're just dealing with a couple of days because I wouldn't have this, I mean, I suppose the earlier the better, just if, if there is some consideration to the uh, quarantine requirement. Uh, okay. But we are just basically giving the, the licensees this option and then they would have to um, understand that this is something that they would have to do in accordance with any Massachusetts procedures required by the governor. Uh, so they could prepare for it in advance, knowing that this is going to be on the agenda. I'll let you figure out what if we need to just, just let me know if you want to go earlier and we'll mark up like a Tuesday or something. Okay. That's okay. The 30th. Is that fine with you um, fellow commissioners? Yes, that's fine. Okay, excellent. Yes. Thank you.
Um, anything um, else, Todd? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, there's just one other thing I just wanted to bring to your attention. As I, many of you may know, we're reviewing a number of variants, uh, potential requests and or compliance type uh, issues related to the regulations. Um, it, as you may also recall, within 138.02, there are provisions that allow the executive director to address variance requests and changes to approve systems of internal controls um, on her own in assuming that the request is related to the internal controls. It appears as though they can all be addressed by the executive director. Um, we're in the process of going through all those. So since we now have this July 2nd date, if there are any that require the commission's attention, perhaps we can bring them to you on that date um, for your review. In is, any event, I'm sorry. I just wondered, when you say that it appears that she can, um, is there a judgment call in terms of when uh, the commission has to act and when the uh, executive director has to act? Because you might want to explain that. Oh, sure. I'd be happy to go through that. Um, I think the rules are, are clear as to when the executive director can act versus when the commission needs to act. And I think the good news is we have an infrastructure to cover both situations. Um, you'll, you remember that, of course, there's a broad variance provision that allows the commission to grant the variance from pretty much any regulation. Um, provided that a number of conditions are met, that it's in the public interest, it wouldn't do any harm, et cetera. Uh, but in recognition of the breadth of the internal control systems and the need at times to be nimble and allow the licensees to make certain changes, uh, the commission included a special variance provision within 138, which is the internal control section, that allows the executive director to sign off on certain changes or modifications. And there's two categories of changes or modifications requests that will come in. There are those that are compliant with the regulations, meaning that there was a non-prescriptive requirement that the licensee just wants to change. So they previously told us they were gonna do it one way, and now they're saying we'd like to do it another way, but we never told them how they had to do it. So as long as the executive director finds that it's essentially the equivalent or it won't reduce the <laughs> level of control over that particular area, the executive director uh, can approve it um, on her own. The second category uh, fits into requests that are non-conforming non with the regulations, meaning that there is a prescriptive requirement in 138 that says you shall do it this way. And they are essentially coming in, the licensee would come in and say, well, we can't do it that way exactly, but here's what we propose. And the executive director can still allow that, and I just wanna make sure I get the language uh, correct. Um, upon a finding that either it's at least equivalent to the regulatory provision or that it's likely to achieve the same outcome as the provision um, contained in 138. So there are standards set out in the regulations that the executive director has to apply to all of these requests. Um, and we have uh, look, looked at these and we feel like we can handle most of them, if not all of them, internally. Uh, Mr. Ban, Mr. Kane are, are going to just communicate with the licensees to make sure we have a clear understanding of exactly what their requests um, are um, so that we can uh, weigh in on them. It would certainly be our intention to prepare a memo or some other type of communication for the commissioner so you could see clearly what the requests were and what the executive director's action uh, was. But my, in raising- just, just on that, I've actually, um, I think I've even said it publicly to um, Executive uh, Director Wells is that we, um, I think it's, we would want to share that publicly, even if it's, you know, we don't take formal action, because I do think there's public interest in these particular variances. Karen's yeah. in your head, yeah. so. And then maybe that's what you were saying, that it will be a public share, not just internal share. 
Of, of course, there's just the one underlying theme that I always like to just bring to everyone's attention is that when it comes to internal controls, there are certain confidentiality concerns that may attach to some of them. Um, there's certainly a way to share, at least in a general sense, what um, these adjustments would be, but we may need to just be careful about getting into too much detail when it comes to internal control submissions and not oversharing. Um, we don't want to compromise. Well, the commission probably should be really quite aware of the internal control. So if, if it's if it can't be made public, we understand. But you know, as long as the commissioners know what they are, that's fine. But Absolutely. Means, but you know, with that said, we're in a public meeting, and we will of course comply with all the, the public uh, records re requirements. So. Um, Absolutely. We're completely upfront about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and we would tell someone specifically why we, if we weren't able to disclose exactly the details of a change, why it was that we weren't able to do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. there are non-disclosure agreements with all the licensees that include the internal controls. Right. And those are all public documents. So everyone has had a chance to look at the fact that internal controls themselves are exempt from public disclosure Thanks. or you know so anyway Excellent. that's just that's an really underlying helpful. yeah yeah and i just we i detailed that just so everybody knows the process i've been you know kept abreast of this but i want to make sure everyone knows in this instance typically um the executive director will sign off on these variants as a matter of course but just because there's been such you know, a lens on this particular matter during this time, we can be probably just bring it to the public's attention um, with a little bit more sunshine than normal. But otherwise, it's really quite ordinary course of business. Absolutely. And I, I would just add, by the way, there are a number of racing procedures that we're looking at as well. And it appears as though most of those can be done um, internally as well. But I would just add that maybe on that July 2nd date, there may be a need uh, to have a look at, at some of those uh, too, things like the Lasix administration procedure and drug testing and things like that. But we're looking at them um, and we, we will be able to brief you on all of that. So Todd, do you know when we would put that on the agenda? Well, I don't, I don't necessarily think that needs to be on the agenda because it appears as though we may be able to just make certain modifications to our internal procedures that don't affect the regulatory compliance. Um, just to, uh, to ensure uh, virus related uh, protections, things like that. Um, Oh, we to, talking, I'm sorry, were you speaking about the horse racing procedure? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, were you speaking of something yeah, else? Yeah, I'm talking about the, the original variance. It's just, you know, some kind of a report where we may not take action on, but we're sharing, you know, the process. When would you be ready for that? July 2nd, Karen? Or I think that's the plan. Okay, so that, thanks. Excellent. Any other issues besides regulations? Todd, legal issues that? Uh, there are other things that may come up, but they're on the agenda setting agenda, so we can maybe get to them in, in the, that course. In the course, okay. Thank you, and thanks for helping us understand that. Thank you. We have a meeting tomorrow. So that is on our agenda. <laughs> it's actually hard <laughs> to think about, but tomorrow um, we will have our Game Sense Impact Report. We already have that on our agenda that was posted yesterday morning, thanks to Marianne, Jamie, and Austin's great efforts. Um, so Mark, Elaine, and Teresa, I know you're ready for that. And the same with items, um, item number four, correct? That's right. Yes, we're ready for that as well. Thank you so much. And then we have a big meeting on our community mitigation fund presentations. I know that um, Mary and um, Joe have been um, conducting their two by twos and huge thank you. Um, Joe and Mary uh, had Commissioner O'Brien and me <laughs> in the two by two and it was an extensive conversation for which we thank you for your time. Um, so uh, very, very, good work, but we're going to be all set for tomorrow. Everybody should pack their lunch, um, get ready. It's going to be a, a good lengthy meeting, but an incredibly important one. 
it is our goal um, that we do complete this work tomorrow and not extend it to July 2nd. There are people who are on some vacation plans around the 4th um, to the extent that vacations are a reality. We want to support that right now. So um, I think we can get, I think it's absolutely achievable tomorrow. Don't you think fellow commissioners? Yes. Yeah, everyone's nodding their head. We're all in, we're all yeah. in Joe. And as a reminder to the staff, there is a 9.30 start tomorrow, so it's a little different. We're going to get going at 9.30 and get this done. I think that was a really good reminder to all the commissioners, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just said it to my husband. Can you remind me tomorrow is a 9.30 start? He looked at me, and I realized that he's not Jamie. Um, <laughs> He said, don't, don't bank on me. Um, so 9.30 start, and it's going to be an excellent start with, um, with some exciting, exciting news on um, our end in terms of hearing also from Mark and Elaine um, and Teresa. So looking forward to those reports and then all in on community mitigation. And I am assuming right now, Karen, do you have anything that we can that we now, given how busy this week's been, that we didn't anticipate for tomorrow that we would need no, to- I, I think we've really covered all the key points that we needed to get done this week. The, um, you know, it was, it was a busy week and we got a lot accomplished, so. Okay, so we should be all set, excellent. Yep. Um, all right, then um, moving on then, Taking number six out, that's my reasonable expectation that we will be complete that discussion. Then we're moving on to number uh, number seven on July 2nd. And I am gonna ask that that go under review given um, I have had a chance to review Todd's edits, but I haven't had a chance to sit down and meet with Bruce and um, Todd on the subject. I wanna do more of my editing and I just, Right now, given our June 30th deadlines, personally have not had the bandwidth to do that. So I'll put it under review because I'm not sure what date in July I would be available given I'm having some adult children visit safely. Um, so if everybody will just allow me that, and then Bruce and Todd, we can have a discussion, and then our next agenda setting, we can I can be more realistic. Is, is that fair? Okay. Yes. Moving on to number eight we have our budget which will be our our big item for july 2nd if we're all set derek hi derek good morning good morning how are you madam chair and commissioners um yes we should be set um we put it up the communications team already posted it for us on friday for public comment um comments are due by tuesday i think close of business um so we'll be able to review those and have a discussion you know, I should comment, uh, I'm sure my fellow commissioners, you see it too, but you know, right away it popped up on LinkedIn that those public comments are being sought. So, you know, kudos to Elaine and Austin and now um, for you know, making sure that we reach out through different channels to assure that the public sees our request. So, we'll be all set for July 2nd. I'm looking forward to it, Derek. We are too. Any questions Thank for Derek? Uh, Commissioner Zunica? No, I trust that uh, people have had a chance to look at it and uh, had a more any ask any more questions of Derek, but uh, I think we should be all set. Okay, I don't see any concerns raised by my fellow yep. commissioners. You're all Madam set. Chair, one other, Madam Chair, one other thing, just to update everyone, we do have a meeting set with Bruce and Joe and Mary, uh, Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, and Joe and Mary to discuss the item regarding the community mitigation fund charge off. So we'll be able, and Todd, so we'll be able to have a um, good discussion about where we, what our recommendation is there is uh, holistically. I think that was really the only item that that raised a need for extra, extra meeting time, right, Derek? Correct, and we're having that meeting on Friday, so we should be able to um, have a good discussion about that. Okay, and if there are any additional questions, of course, any commissioner could reach back to you before uh, before next Thursday. 
Um, just one more thing, um, Kathy, on the budget, um, Derek, did we uh, get any written comments from licensees or others? Not as of yet that have been forwarded to me. Okay. But I will check in with them prior to to see if we're going to have any. Okay. Good point. So it's, a, it's public comments as well as licensee comments. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're in that cycle, that part of the cycle. Because it was presented, you know, last time and now we're voting on it. And just to reiterate, though, what we already know is that they have been involved throughout the, the, the budget de development, but now you just are asking for more formal comments, right? Okay. Correct. Yes. Okay. And that will require a vote. Um, number nine, uh, I, we were looking for just a clarification, and a little bit of learning on the ADW and simulcasting. Alex, yes. good morning. Good morning. Um, if there's going to be a lot of things on that agenda for that day, we can postpone it. Um, and I just wanted to get some guidance um, from the commission um, about what they're looking for and how um, kind of like uh, how detailed or how much they're looking for on this. Well, I think I actually made the ask and I, and I wouldn't mind keeping it on this uh, July 2nd um, okay. because, uh, you know, the, of the potential for opening the, um, our horse racing. But I think, Alex, you've been able to describe to me on a high level, and I think that's all we're looking for is, you know, how ADW is conducted from Massachusetts um, in terms of how, uh, the, you know, historic, it's been in place for a long time in that origins, because I'm not sure, particularly um, as uh, really jurisdictions across the country consider sports betting that and, um, and use of mobile uh, devices, that people understand what ADW is versus simulcasting and uh, just, you know, and being at the, at the track and betting. So um, on the on the live racing. So if you could just give a little bit of a, a you know five minute presentation on what it all means, okay. and then if, and then if Chad could just describe the um, any the revenue piece. Uh, I think uh, yeah. Elaine and I raised that question. So it's just I think could probably be incorporated into Karen's administrative update, um, perhaps. Okay. Does that are you comfortable with that? I don't want you to yes. feel uncomfortable for being prepared for that. Yes, just, that's great. Yeah, just a little bit of learning because I think I learned that even among ourselves that there was some confusion. And so um, it's give you an opportunity to share. Okay, that sounds great. Commissioner Cameron, do you agree? Oh, I agree, but I really thought we were going to have a two hour presentation on this and, and, <laughs> and, and a white paper that was being prepared. So I, uh, yeah. no, no, I think it is. I do think it's a good idea because I do think there are a lot of people that don't realize there is a form of mobile betting that occurs now. And uh, the only thing I would add is uh, maybe Dr. Lightbum, if you could just take a second to kind of explain the difference between a sports bet uh, mobily and um, the accounts wagering account, how it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Commissioner Cameron, to be clear, the white paper is due in September. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> we're, we're, we are a little bit, you know, thoughtful. Give a little time. But I think that that's really what I had hoped for, just especially um, yeah. as, as things, you know, reopen. That sounds great. You, you know, you reminded me, uh, Kathy, early on uh, when we, you know, in, in the life of this uh, commission, we, we used to have um, 15 minutes of learning uh, every other Friday, if I remember correctly, uh, of racing, 15 minutes of, uh, of racing, which I, 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 I attended, uh, others did, and I, I, I enjoyed very much. Um, the, this, this industry is just so, um, you know, it, it has just so many ins and outs, uh, like, like the ones you just point out, but so many more, um, you know, uh, it, it would be one thing to consider just to kind of like put in uh, maybe something like we've done before, uh, a, lunch, a brown, bag, uh, brown bag lunch or something, or, or some recurring training, not unlike what we're now currently doing on the games, on the rules of the games, 
Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and, and again, I know I'm not trying to sign up Alex here for a big <laughs> effort um, or a white paper or anything like that. Uh, but even if it's an informal uh, gathering, uh, you know, with with a, with one topic from time to time, mm -hmm. uh, it would also go a long way. Well, if I I don't know how many how many uh, two week periods you did that, but it sounds like if you multiply that out, that's a lot of learning that perhaps Commissioner O'Brien and I missed out on. So we're we're playing catch up. So we'll at least start we'll start with a, a small segment on this, um, Alex, for next Thursday. But that's a great suggestion, and, and uh, Karen and team, uh, you know, the, the one thing we all appreciate is any opportunity to learn about learn from all of the team's expertise even even having even relearning is really reinforcement is really helpful so well and, God, there, I love and also cognizant of the fact that we can all five commissioners attend to a training session and, and others That's too exactly so right yes yes in this instance I, I actually would love it to be public mainly because i do think it's of public interest right now to understand that distinction so Thanks, Alex. Yeah. And a great idea, Commissioner Zuniga. All right. So that will stay on July 2nd. And then um, item number 10 is scheduled for July 2nd. Karen, I am, had asked a little bit more on background on that, and I'm wondering if it's really ready for prime time. Yeah, I, I think that it would make sense to uh, put that off. We can we don't have to necessarily give a date right now, but uh, I think I think we're okay if we want more information to uh, postpone that. We could put it under review or, or pick a date, but either way, I think works for me. Right. I haven't really had a chance um, to speak with Todd. I'm not sure if my fellow commissioners are interested in getting more, um, you know, either through two by twos or whatever, but just to understand that it. I touched on it because there was a public hearing earlier on it, but I, I'd like to, maybe we'll just put under review and think about it for our next agenda setting, what particular date we would like. Okay. Okay, does that make sense, Todd? Oh, sorry, my space bar didn't work. Yes, that, that sounds good. Okay, excellent, thank you. So that means all of our work is done. <laughs> What other items does does anybody else have for July second? You know, of course, our, our our meaty piece will be the budget that that day. Um, do we have any other items for July second that I, I do for racing? Um, yes. If we could move the um, item number thirteen, the mass thoroughbred breeders um, request to race at Finger Lakes. Um, Todd and I might have to uh, rework the wording a little bit for Marianne, but maybe if we could change it now to um, request to hold races outside of Massachusetts. Okay. And um, it's kind of time sensitive because they're trying to get um, up and going. So if we could move that to the July 2nd meeting, that would be great. It does not need to be discussed tomorrow, Alex. No, we could wait. Yeah. Okay, because we could always amend our, our um, agenda, not that we do that. Um, traditionally. Alrighty, so that will be on July 2nd. I had raised earlier, Alex, do we need to revisit the guidelines? I'm not sure where we left that in terms of action from the commission. Todd, right. um, um, the guidelines for reopening for um, the live racing and then the um, plans for the two simulcasting facilities, those could also be on for July 2nd. Excellent. For voting. Okay. Any other item for July 2nd? Not hearing anyone. Is that somebody just joined, but no, no further items. Karen, are you all set then? Yeah, I'm all set. Okay. Um, Mary Ann, right now, our next date on our notes is July 30th. Uh, so it would, would normally be 716 if we'd stayed on our normal cadence. 
Seven sixteen would be the next commission meeting. July eighth would be the agenda setting. Okay. Right now, I'm not hearing that we have business needed for July sixteenth. We will have the opportunity July eighth to revisit that. Or am I hearing that somebody will be better prepared for the 16th? Uh, Madam Chair, um, one of the things, you know, that we wanted to discuss, um, you know, today a little bit was on the PPC relicensing. And I just wanted to ask Loretta if she, um, if she was looking at doing suitability at some point uh, in the not too distant future. And I didn't know if that was going to be ready maybe for the 16th. <clears throat> I'd like to see on some kind of a cadence on that. I know that we were thinking today was the day to, to kind of carve out the uh, schedule, including uh, perhaps think about scheduling the public hearings. Loretta, you're muted. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Loretta, I'm, 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 in a I'm, I've been relegated to the attic this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, um, suitability would be ready to go on the 16th. Okay, great. That's so we good. Can, that we can schedule that for the 16th. Can you describe, um, Loretta, Joe, and Karen, what other pieces that you, right now we're anticipating? Suitability, the public hearings. Yeah, why don't I, why don't I take a, a stab at that one? Um, okay. So in our letter that we sent out to, to PPC, there are six pieces that needed to be done in there. We've gotten the first two. We got the application in, we got the fee in. And then um, the four remaining pieces are the suitability, which is in process, and Loretta's been working on that. The next piece is a site visit, um, which I think uh, Commissioner Zuniga was interested in that and looking at some of the financials on site and, and things of that nature. Um, that uh, talks about, um, you know, just looking at the physical condition of the plant, uh, you know, uh, any capital improvements and also looking at some financial documents. But I think Loretta had indicated we might actually have those in house um, to look at. So, um, and I talked with Lance yesterday, he actually indicated that um, he thought it might be good to do the site visit before they reopen. Um, of course, if that were to happen, that would have to be scheduled very quickly. Um, so I'm Can not I sure that can... that's something all the commissioners should think about doing. Is that, you know, I just don't know in terms of when you first licensed, of course, uh, site visits were mandated. Should we, as part of our, I know that the pandemic does, you know, raise concerns, but I wonder if that's something that we should do within the open meeting law restraints? I mean, you could possibly do it as a subset of, of the commission or in some of the cases where, you know, before opening at uh, both Encore and MGM, we did walkthroughs, but taken separately uh, in, in groups of two. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't think in this, there's really any deliberations going on. It's really kind of looking at, at financial documents and other things and, and uh, you know, just looking around and assessing the, the status of the physical you know, plant there. So I think you could do it either way, really. Okay, so we can address whether um, all five of us go or not down the road, but we should be thinking about that for scheduling. So site visit, so um, the application can, be suitability site. Can I mention something on this on the site visit? Um, the original idea, right when we sketched out the you know the process, really this was prior to COVID nineteen, was that we expected to inspect certain uh, financial records for the property um, and not take possession because uh, you know they could be then a public record. Um, we are we're almost done. We're not quite done, uh, but we're almost done with the financial piece. Uh, we have a meeting set up, uh, Loretta and Monica. Um, and I think given what, what has transpired through the conversations and that draft document, I don't know that there's a huge need for that site visit from a financial uh, perspective. I don't want to just close out the option just yet. Um, 
but you know we've been able to have conversations and inspect documents virtually and, and, and that has been i believe uh, positive so um, so, for those fin so the financial so what about the physical piece Enrique? well we we are you know we're, we're very familiar with it i guess uh coincidentally uh, you know inspecting as a reopening will be very appropriate uh, whether it's part of the relicensing or part of the reopening um, and, and yes we've done it before in which we stagger our visits we go to different groups or we only go you know again two commissioners at a time okay yeah I, I was gonna point that out it, I didn't think this was a site visit for commissioners to assess the physical plant I thought it was just on-site hands-on financial records so the idea of the five of us needing to go as part of this process was never really what we contemplated it was never contemplated excellent so it's not so it's more for the financial rather than physical okay excellent and i'm glad that you can do it mostly with all the documents that are already available i knew you were doing that Enrique. so good all right so those are the four items so far so the, the next piece of it is the public hearing and um why don't i um maybe i can share my screen here and just show you what's in the document does everybody see that yes yes okay mm -hmm. so the so there's we got the suitability process we talked about the site visit we talked about and the public hearing we talk about convening one or more public hearings in or around plainville so right there, I think we probably need to change that. I imagine we will try to do these remotely as we've done with everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to consider that. Um, but it says the following shall apply to each public hearing. Licensee shall have someone available who has knowledge of the facility. Uh, the licensee shall make a presentation that includes a historic review of the preceding license period and a discuss discussion about the future of the gaming establishment. Uh, you know, in my conversation with Lance, um, that's pretty generic, and he really would like some guidance on what we would really like to see in that presentation. And you know, at this point, I didn't really have any particular answers for him, other than saying we want a you know a a, a good description of the things that have happened over the five-year term of the license, and you know, and, and uh, uh, so on. But we don't really have particular guidance. You know sort of prepared for that so i think we'll need to have that discussion of what we want that to be um i mean and enrique um you know without getting into too much substance because we're in you know agenda setting um will you will you be able to work so that you can give guidance perhaps in july 2nd on what's expected or in, yeah yeah i mean i think they already have templates from looking at their quarterlies and their annuals that would well, that's what I was thinking they could probably draw on their annuals right yeah but we can be more specific on the second certainly but yeah that's a good template okay yeah that that makes sense Joe mm -hmm. okay and then the the next piece is we want to have uh, certainly notify and hopefully have attend uh, representatives of the host community surrounding communities the ILEVs and so on um, we want to have, you know, the, obviously it's open to the public, um, and we want to have enough. We want to give enough notice so the public can uh, submit comments in writing if they choose to do so. So we were thinking that at a minimum, we would probably need three weeks notice. I think before we would hold the meeting, you know, so that we so it would get out to I mean, get out to everybody. And I'm going to have to have Mary track down all of the, the contacts and so on of everybody in these areas and you know some of these things may have changed over time and, and uh, you know make sure we have all the right people there um, you know another question is is this something that we want to do in the evening or is it is it a daytime meeting um, you know it's easier to do daytime meetings now with zoom and everything um, I think it, you know before licenses were issued and hearings were held they were typically done in the late afternoon early evening so members of the public could be there um, maybe that's not as important today as it was, um, you know, before these things were licensed. And, you know, look, people have experience with a casino there. They know, you know, when, when there was no casino uh, and you were holding a public hearing, uh, maybe 
the the um, the group of folks who would who would be interested in that were you know it was probably might be a little bit more difficult. But anyway, so that's that's what we need to do, and and I guess. And then the last piece of it is the final review procedure. And this would, we expect will go similar to what we did with MGM and with uh, Encore, where each responsible party will uh, have a, you know, a big commission meeting. Each responsible party will present to the commission on the status of compliance and where things are. And you can see this, this whole laundry list of things that, uh, that, that we look at. And, you know, those you know the encore one was you know several hours uh and, and we expect that that would be the same you know to have a good full analysis of everything that's been happening um but i guess you know right now i guess we wanted to sort of take the temperature of the commission on on how quickly you want to move on this um you know, is this something, do we, want to, do we want to be a little bit more methodical and say, let's get the facility open and then try to schedule these things? And if we do that, that may push us out, you know, some period of time. Uh, you know, I think from staff level, we can move as, as quickly as, as you want to move. Um, we want to check in and, you know, see how much uh, bandwidth our licensees have to, you know, to be, putting these presentations together. And I'm sure there's gonna be some additional document requests and other things as we, you know, sort of delve into this, these evaluations. So I guess with that, I'd ask, I'd ask the commissioners where, where, you know, how quickly or how slowly you'd like to move on this. Gail? Um, well, it seems to me that there isn't a great urgency. It's not like we have information that there's some things that are you know, really problematic to the commission. And it would seem to me that they, uh, the licensee would need all hands on deck for a reopening. Um, so I have no problem um, being methodical and um, making sure um, uh, both of us have the bandwidth to really do this properly. Commissioner O'Brien, my name. Yeah, I would agree. I think you look at the meetings we've had the last couple of weeks, we sort of have something more imminent to focus on. Um, and then I know, I know working remotely is fantastic and people are accessible, but I also do want to acknowledge there's still a rhythm to the summer and getting people and getting everybody to be able to do what they need to do, including the guests queued up for meetings. I just think we need to be cognizant of that too. And, and as Gail said, it's not, you know, pressing that we, you know, Commissioner Stabbins? push forward fast on it. Um, Joe, if you could just uh, take down the um, oh, sure. document, yeah. thanks. Uh, Bruce? Yeah, no, I would agree. We uh, Both our licensees and our team have a lot on their plate right now. And if there's additional things that we're asking Lance and his team to have pulled together in preparation for the hearing, um, uh, you know, that's, that's really going to come secondary, right, to getting the facility open safely. So... Uh, but just to note, you know, I was, um, Joe raised the question of what we might be looking for, and I know we'll talk about this at another meeting, but as much as we wanted, I wanted them to reflect on what they'd done during the previous five years of the license, I would really be encouraged to see what plans they can share with us as to the, the next five years operating under the license as part of that public presentation. But, um, I'm in complete agreement. Yeah, you know, let's let's do it as uh, both our teams have the bandwidth to to pull a public meeting together. And Enrique. Yeah, same same thing. You know, it's uh, we'll have to calibrate a little Goldilocks, whatever works. That's not you know, um, there's no need to weigh unnecessarily, but it's all about the bandwidth and other priorities. So we keep That's right. Um, right. Um, I feel the same. I feel August is um, going to be, if the reopening occurs um, in, in the sort of the timeline that we're imagining it to occur, August is going to be a critically important month for the licensee. Um, I would say the public hearing will need a little bit of time, as you point out, to make sure it's fair and, and it's uh, achievable. And we would want to work with the um, all the plain bill uh, 
town officials to make sure it's really a, a, a rigorous uh, public hearing. I think, uh, you know, you, if you maybe for the next agenda setting meeting, coming up with a proposed timeline for us, given how you, what you're hearing from the fellow commissioners, that might be helpful um, without holding anyone, you know, to a particular date, but just a sense into September, you know, where we can gauge what might be expected. You know, if it's October, uh, it sounds as though no one would be startled by that. I think the process needs to be just really fair for input from the public. Suspect that it will be, um, given our, our history, it's going to probably be positive, but we want to make sure that we give everyone's voices a chance to be heard. So, so I guess I'm hearing then, well, suitability, I think we can still do that when, when we need to do it. And um, July 16th, we've got that up. And so then the next would be the physical, the uh, financial. And I think uh, maybe Commissioner Zuniga, you'll be able to report on, is that your plan to report on it or just have it completed? Uh, you know, I want to check in with uh, Loretta. We have a meeting with Loretta and Monica, um, and I defer to how, you know, we've done uh, a report uh, with a short presentation in the past, and then, you know, a, 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 a more detailed report just distributed to commissioners. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you on this. Yeah, and so that would be part of your overall plan, Joe. Okay, and then, so what I'm hearing then really for the public hearing and the final review, we're talking sort of a, maybe a post Labor Day. Is that, is that the sense that I'm getting? Seems to me that that's where um, you're likely to get the most public input. I think August might be a difficult month, even though we're home more, it still is a summer month. Um, and also I think it's going to be a really busy month for the licensee. So kind of unfair to them to have to be prepared for that. That's a big piece of work for them. Does September start feeling a little bit more comfortable, everyone? Yeah. All right, well that, well, that gives us some direction to go on and I think we'll, we'll start working, you know, we'll start looking at, uh, you know, obviously the public hearing is gonna be a completely separate meeting that won't coincide with the commission meeting. So That's we'll right. schedule that at, on whatever day we want, I suppose, and at, you know, whatever time we deem is appropriate. Um, yeah, and work with Lance, you know, work with Lance to see what's going to be best for, for him. You know, they're, they're interested in getting this finalized too, you know. Right. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. Excellent. And Loretta, with that said, July 16th is still okay for you, correct? It is. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Joe. So... That we were on just the idea of what July 16th, what business might need to come up on July 16th. We, we started the return to the uh, relicensing process. Any other item before we move on to number 11 for July 16th? Stay tuned, uh, Loretta, maybe it might make sense to combine that with July 30th if we're in, and maybe not hold a July 16th meeting. Karen, let's think about that. Okay. Commissioners, how do you feel if we um, have an agenda setting meeting on the 8th? Um, maybe we can talk about number 11, but if it's just one item, I mean, there's, there's no reason why we couldn't do just one item, but it might make sense to consolidate here, Karen. Yeah, especially given folks taking vacation, things like that. We want to give some flexibility to everyone. I, yeah. So, uh, number 11, Mark. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, Hi. Uh, yeah, we, we are set with that. Um, the report is done. It's, it's actually a brief report re, um, looking at magic wave four and transitions between wave one and wave four. Um, in anticipation of a much, much larger report that will will hit later in the year. So we're set, no question about it. Are you set for July 30th rather than July 16th? I would need to check with uh, Dr. Bolberg on on whether or not she could be prepared for, for that meeting. I, I don't think so it's right now, she thinks it's July 30th though, right, Mark? 
Right now, I've confirmed with her July 30th, but I, okay. I certainly can check about July 16th if you would like, Chair. No, I think um, um, what I'm wondering is if we, uh, let's, are there any other items that people would be um, prepared for for July 30th? So, of course, we know that items are going to come up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we know that if there's a potential reopening during this time, so it's not likely that we convening. Um, if the reopenings occur, there might be questions that come up during that time. So July 16th is a tentative date in any case. I was just thinking if it's a business-oriented meeting, um, typical business, we might want to consolidate. Karen, what are you right. thinking? I, I, would, I would suggest consolidating one way or the other, just for expediency. I don't think it matters the 16th, the 30th. It would depend on schedules, probably the 30th. It makes sense if we already have Dr. Volper uh, scheduled. Uh, she did such a great job dealing with the, I think it was a, a celebratory uh, um, parade that was going on outside her, her home <laughs> the other day. She we're did, all juggling so much when working from home. Yeah. She did great. I think it, I wondered if it were a college or, or um, high school graduation. So let's uh, have uh, Loretta, we'll move you to the 30th. Does that make sense, anyone? Yes. Okay. All right, um, we've got number uh, 12 under review, the independent directors gaining vendor primary. Yes, I'd like to, um, uh, Bill Curtis, Kate Hardigan, and I are working on that. We, we'd like to keep it under review, uh, probably for just a short period. Uh, we can report to you on the status of the new designations, but I'd like a little more time to have us research what would be involved if we expanded the designations of the independent uh, directors, uh, you know, what do other jurisdictions do? What kind of numbers would that mean for our licensing division and investigators? And what do we think we might gain for it? So uh, gain from it if we did expand. So if I can keep it under review uh, with an eye towards you know, working on the, the research uh, in the near term, and then at the next meeting, uh, uh, hopefully give, give a suggested date. Okay. And then we've got number 13 for the second now, uh, Dr. Lightbound. Number 14. Uh, yeah, number 14 can stay under review. It'll probably be another month or so before Steve's ready to come back with a new um, schedule of his promotional funds. Okay. Mark, number 15. Uh, yes, we'll still keep that under review, um, working on it. Um, and I think that it'll be in the, in the coming months still. Okay, Jill, the template? Yes, still under review. Good morning, Jill. Good morning, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, alrighty, and then um, compliance, I know ongoing uh, uh, process uh, for you to consider, Karen. And then uh, Commissioner Zuniga, you and I and Karen spoke. At this point, it makes sense given all the um, the economic environment of today to maybe take this off the agenda notes all together for the time being. Yes, we'll, we'll take it off uh, for now, maybe with, um, with the expectation that, uh, you know, we might regroup and, and do a, a little special project update, maybe on an annual basis, something like that um, at a later time. Yeah, and then we'll just revisit that as a potentially um, a, a new item for the agenda, but it will take a different course or a different um, formulation. All right, excellent. Any other items for um, July uh, 30th now or into our August? I'm not surprised. We have had, this is quite... Um, We've been going at a pretty rapid pace, and the fact that there's been such considerable work done um, during this time is, you know, it's a credit to all of you. Everyone can take a little bit of a deep breath. Tomorrow is a big meeting, uh, wrapped up in July 2nd with another really important meeting. I, on the side, also, 
Derek is doing um, meeting other deadlines with respect to internal controls. So there's a lot going on and it's okay for everyone to take a, a good breath. I don't know, but my watch constantly tells me to do it. So <laughs> that's good. So everybody take a breath and uh, we will then reconvene for agenda setting on July 8th and everyone can think about their work going forward and how the commission can help move those items along. Now we do need to go back to our minutes though. From this morning, I've had a chance to look at them. Um, I'm, I'm barring any other issue on the notes. Okay. Commissioners, I think you're all set. Thumbs up, okay. Commissioner Cameron, I see, thanks. All right, then let's, um, if we could return to the um, item number two on our agenda, please. Sure, Madam Chair, um, and always a, a big shout out to Shower for her good work. Uh, in your packet, you have the June 10th agenda setting, agenda setting meeting minutes. Uh, I'd move their approval as always subject to any corrections for epigraphical errors or any other non-material matters. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Zuniga. Any questions or comments? I've had a chance to look at them. No questions from me. Okay, everyone looks all set. I'll do a roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And I vote yes. Shara, thank you as always, 5-0. You've been keeping up a very steady pace, so thank you. And are there any other uh, items that we need to bring up today? We are reconvening tomorrow at 9.30 on our agenda, which is posted already on our website. Hearing none. Motion to adjourn. Thank Second. you. Thank you. All right, no questions. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Shazunika. Aye, thank you everybody. Mr. Stebbins. Aye, uh, thanks everybody. And thank you, I vote yes. See you tomorrow. Thanks everyone for joining us today, great work.